Nation, we are live. Sean Quanik Sase is down one game. He could be one of the very last foreigners to keep himself alive and the foreign hope alive, aside from major thus far in the competition. And he is certainly a favorite. <laughs> so well, let's introduce the players in the Southeast as the Blue Prodos. Can he get past the huge, huge mountain in front of him? It is Quantic Sase. And in the top left, he was once upon a time known as the really the Zerg who could only function well in those standard situations. But my god, has he shattered that reputation today. What do we have in store for us in game number four? It's Slayer's Coca. Now, Sase, you know, where do you think it puts one's mental state after a game like that? Like, certainly, if you are going to make a move like that, like what Sase made in game two, you have to expect that everything is thrown out the window and anything could happen. But now you're going into game three, you're down a game, your tournament life's on the line here for a prominent tournament, TSL4. Where do you take it? Already Pylon on the inside of his base, not really going to change things up from what he's done in the earlier games. You know, quite frankly, it seems to me Sase does have a solid game, so play the solid game. But what do you think? You know, I, a little known fact about Sase, he does get very frustrated with himself. After a lot of tournament losses, I've heard him personally say things like, God, I can't believe I threw that match away. Oh, God, I play so stupid. And honestly, that sort of inner monologue, that sort of self-frustration, is the exact attitude you need to improve. You need to be able to point out your own mistakes to work on them. But when you're in a tournament, you have to turn that off temporarily. And if that's on too strong, if that inner monologue's a little too loud, it can distract you from exactly what you're looking at. Sase now has the chance to block this hatch if he wants to, but again, I think that this forge at the front's a little early. That was, uh, yeah, that was actually kind of crazy because Coca could have put that hatchery down before the probe even got there. Of course, he didn't know that, so we have full vision. But the it was the pool that went down first. He's still going to get that hatch down. So with the Zerglings uh, definitely being able to come out right now, you know, obviously there's the Nexus down. There's not going to be any sort of additional aggression. Uh, so why that came first, not really sure. But he's uh, setting up his wall here. And uh, at least preparing himself. This is definitely a, a more typical opening that I would expect to see out of Coca versus a player like Sase. But he switches it up just a little bit, fine-tuning uh, and tweaking there for game number four. One thing that's uh, notable about Sase's double pylon opening is that it allows him to get his... Um his probe count passed 18 pretty easily, which is a mark that a lot of players get stuck at, but he's already up at 21 food, keeping on par with Zerg. There's the third hatchery going down, and Marcus, finally we have ourselves a normal-looking game. <laughs> right, exactly. I was just kind of thinking that. I'm like, well, you know, it wasn't stopped. He got it down. Uh, the Zerglings going out and, and uh, you know, checking. Maybe this is just uh, you know, Coca's map to feel a little bit more comfortable on. We are going to see a gas coming down uh, already at uh, right around 24, 25 supply. Huh. Sometimes we will see that obviously uh, coming much later. So is he actually going to set himself up for some potential aggression? It doesn't look like he's going to let anything slip through here and see this third base where sometimes this can be like a bait. But, um, you know, the option is there. You know, I I guess I'd say that this looks kind of blink-like coming out of Sase. He'll probably, yep, there's the extra geyser going to be thrown down. Um, I'm still trying to sort through the gas timings. It's a little hard because Sase is keeping two in some of the geysers and three in some of the others. But this very much so looks like a blink timing. Probably Robo now or Twilight Council going to be the big decider. There's the Robo play, so... I actually think he might be going for just the standard two base push all in. All right, well, on the other side, uh, with the Robo going down for Sase on the other side, uh, we just do have still the gas being, uh, the gas being mined right now. Obviously more and more drones going out and the hatchery did finish. So whatever he does end up producing it is going to be uh, on the three hatcheries. And he has full control over the middle. He's got these Zerglings at the front. He's ready to find any sort of uh, pylon on the outside. So it seems like it'll be very difficult for, uh, for Sase to be able to kind of break this front line, Sean and yeah. uh, be able to you know, put on any sort of damage at all. But there we have the Robo finishing up and the plus one is on its way. 
I just I'm really curious to see where Sase is going to be going with this. You know, I really think that he's just going to be relying on this standard two base push. He could potentially go for the third, but you know, I've seen Sase play on this map a lot. He likes doing this build. But the thing to consider on Coca's side, he did get the one gas geyser down at a little after four minutes. So look at that. His speed on his links is already halfway done. He's already starting his lair. His Roach Warren is at a normal time, but now suddenly it's seven minutes. That's when he starts two more extractors, and he's going to be relying heavily on Zerglings with speed to deflect this push as opposed to anything else. And what is this Immortal doing? Oh, oh my what god. what is that Immortal doing? God, Immortal balls of steel is what this guy has. That Immortal right here. has a death wish. What is Sase doing? This is such a risk. Uh, oh my god! I mean, really, uh, Sase's just uh, lucky there's not as many Zerglings out, but there's 18 on the way. That probe is going to get taken oh, he's out. he's got to run. He has to run right now. He has to get the hell out of there. I mean, ordinarily, you don't see Zerglings with speed right now, so it's a little oh, bit easier. No. Sase, what are you leaving him at the bottom of your ramp for? Get up the ramp! Oh my god, that is freaking me out, Marcus. And the gateways open up right now, but uh, the Zergling's actually going to the back, spreading Sase out just a little bit here. And look, the pro production has completely ceased here for Koki. He even threw down a fourth hatch raise, a macro hatch, getting that evolution chamber, but it's nothing but Zerglings and Roaches coming out right here. Roach speed on its way as well. And Koka is setting himself up to sandwich this Protoss, but... We do have four Immortals that are going to be out here. Jeez, A lot of energy sausage. on these sentries and three additional gateways coming out right now. And there it looks like there's the Overseer. Tries to drop a single change in. Pick off anything that would want to spot it, but... This is going to be a hard one, Marcus. This is an all-in, just last-ditch death attempt from Sase, and it may very well work. Look at that. Four freaking Immortals. Now we see... The Observer coming in. I'm not sure he'll have time or resources to get the War Prism up. He might be relying purely on pylons. So, yeah, we do see three probes coming into this. Oh, I worry, though, about the Zerg army on the left side of the map. Oh, a lot of roaches, or excuse me, a lot of wings and a few roaches. He's putting himself way out of position here. And there's nothing to block the front. I guess he did put the two pylons up, but they're going to fall so quick. Oh my god, Coco with a very nicely timed counterattack. Sase's a little torn on what to do. He's now moving forward with his army, but up into oh. the main swings a whole slew of those Zerglings. Where is the warp and where do you choose to send your units? There's the target fire on the pylon. Sase loses the ability to produce out of three of those gateways and is immediately splitting up his units at the front. It looks like we're gonna have another trade. Yeah, we are, but you know, I don't I don't think that Sase can withhold it once the assault's done at the main. He's trying to pull all of his pros back, but they're being chased away. Another warp in of stalkers, but they're not doing anything in the middle of the map. This is going to go down, but I feel like he's got to make his way into the main immediately and start killing some of the production capability. Immortals off to the side are getting assaulted oh, oh, here by the main. drones. Oh, the, oh. the main. He loses all the sentries. Oh. A total misplay from Sase. The two base all in is failing miserably. Sase was distracted and GG. GG. Sase wow. says, Sugoyo says, good luck in the tournament. And yet again, another foreigner falls to a top Korean. Uh, I mean, you know, moving out just at an un